Amanda Gagne. I'm one of the staff advisors at SMCC. And in this video, we're going to look at the student compass. It's our student handbook, full of lots of important information, dates and contact information. So I'm gonna give you a quick overview of what you can find in here. As I said, it's our handbook. So inside there's a student calendar, policies and information, a planner, contact information, an index and table of contents to help you navigate the book, and campus maps to help you navigate the campuses. This also ties in with our student portal called My Main Guide. And I'll show you that. And here's another view of the cover. So what's inside? Here's a table of contents. It gives an overview as well as page numbers of where things are. The majority of this book is a planner. And the planner has dates and events that are already filled in for you. There's also space to write stuff in for yourself. And the compass matches up with our portal, the My Main Guide. To illustrate that, here is the landing page of My Main Guide. And here's the table of contents. So you can see that the same topic areas are covered between the two. Um, there may be different items within the book and on the website, but they're on the same theme similarly. Uh, my degree in the book, it describes faculty versus staff advisors and other topics such as your immunizations, student success programs, you have path to graduation, summer academy and trio. Um, it also looks at testing and in my main guide in the my degree section you can track degree progress grades and more. So similar but different between the two platforms the student calendar. So this will be at the beginning of the book. Um, very important information here as far as when classes start, campus is closed, at drop period. Um, so this is going to be really crucial and these are actually the events that are typed into the planner for you. At drop. So this is at the beginning of the semester where students can alter their schedule by adding or dropping courses. You can also receive a refund during ad drop for tuition and tech fees. Uh, depending on your course, if it doesn't last a whole semester, then there may be some proration involved with those. And there's no refund for just not going to class. You have to formally drop the class or withdraw if it's later. We'll talk about that momentarily. This shows that ad drop starts at the beginning of the semester and then it, uh, it ends on September 8th for the fall of 2020 withdrawing. So withdrawing from a class that happens after ad drop. It's different in that you see a W appear in your transcript. Ad drop does not hit your transcript at all. Depending when you withdraw, you may get some money refunded. Um, this could affect financial aid, housing, and academic standing as far as a completion rate. We'll discuss that. So if you need to come into advising for a walk-in, reach out to your faculty advisor. Um, you can reach out for support on this to get some guidance as well. And similar to ad drop, you must formally withdraw. You can't just stop going to a course. And you can see on the calendar here that you can withdraw quite a ways into the semester. The amount of money you get back continues to go down the further you go, but you can withdraw pretty late into the semester if need be. Academic standing. So I'd mentioned completion rate. That's part of academic standing. Um, for good standing, you need a GPA of 2.0 or higher and a completion rate of 66%. So basically completing the majority of the courses that you enroll in. And this is calculated at the end of the fall and spring semesters. For those that fall below those two requirements, there's warning, probation, and suspension. You can get back up by maintaining your numbers and getting back into good standing. For midterm grades, that's a way to kind of gauge where you're at in the semester. So at week 10, about 60% point of the semester, the faculty will submit grades. It's a chance to kind of gauge and see where you're at, um, work to improve grades, work with your professor, um, ultimately withdraw if you need to, but it's a good snapshot to see where you're at. And it's not a guarantee that will be your final grade, and these grades will not appear in a transcript. Closings and alerts. We also have a section discussing about how to find out if there's campus closures. Multiple ways to find out. 
um, the size that's listed in the book. We also have Brave Mobile Security, which will give you alerts. There's also on my main guide, you can update and make sure your phone number's in there accurately for text alerts and our webpage or Facebook. And we also have a store line. And then this shows the planner. So as I said, the dates are filled in and these are um, from the student calendar. And there's still some room if you have to write stuff in for yourself. And it shows you important things, the ad drop, um, some money related things. It has little keys on the side there too. So that just gives you an overview so you can see what the actual planner part looks like. And that's the overview. Um, we'll have these available in advising for physical copies. And there's also a PDF version on our student portal. Thank you. And I'll have a video about my main guide as well.